find out where Egypt is headed now, though. We're joined again from Washington by Ed Hussein. He's a senior fellow with the Council on Foreign Relations. Ed, uh, good to have you back on the program. Uh, let me just start off by reading to you um, an op-ed that was in the Washington Post this morning. This is written by George Soros. And uh, here's his quote. He says, as a committed advocate of democracy and open society, I cannot help but share in the enthusiasm that is sweeping across the Middle East. I hope President Obama will expeditiously support the people of Egypt. And I read that to you, Ed, because I know that you have been advocating for a stronger response by the White House to this crisis. Do you believe we are finally getting there? Um, and good to be back again, Betty. I, I, I only wish that we still weren't at this stage of having intelligent, thoughtful people like George Soros having to write in the Washington Post, still calling on the Obama White House to take a solid stance, one that's concrete. Because to Obama's credit, I mean, he's tried to be caveated, he's tried to be different, he's tried to keep the U.S. out of it. Mm -hmm. But all of that's only contributed to making the situation worse in the ground. In private, it seems that he had asked uh, um, uh, Mubarak to leave as soon as possible. Mubarak's response was what we saw. Mubarak's people, his mob, responded in the way that they did over the last two days. Horrendous, upsetting response and killing innocent people. And, you know, and, and now we have a situation where tomorrow it's going to be Friday prayers again in Egypt mm -hmm. and, and in the rest of the region. And by, by virtue of so many people coming together and the uncertainty again in the air and a, a lack of clarity from essentially the leader of the free world and the, uh, and the kind of democracy that ordinary Egyptians want to see, there's a real prospect that we'll see more blood and more killing and more mayhem on the streets of Cairo yet again. Uh, you know, but Ed, earlier this week we had talked with Secretary Kissinger, and you know, to be you know, to, to take the other side of this. I mean, Secretary Kissinger was saying, look, uh, the problem is is that, or, or one of the issues is that, you know, how do you balance for the United States between supporting what is going on on the ground in Cairo and intervening and imposing a government on that country? We can't do that. Um, it's not about imposing a government on that country. It's about ending a 30-year rule by a, 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 one of the most tyrannical regimes in the world. And what follows is up to the people of Egypt. I think what the last eight, nine days have shown us is that the people of Egypt now have reached a stage where young bloggers, intellectuals, professors, judges, journalists are capable of developing a civil society response to this issue, mobilizing whether it's Ayman Noor or Baraday or Amr Musa or others in a way that, like other countries, in the end, in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the long term, we will get there. In the short term, this will be bitter. Our choice is, will we continue to elongate the short term mm -hmm. over another 30 years, 40 years of, with Mubarak's son or, a, or, or another dictator, or will we take you know, the tough, bitter medicine in the short term now and ensure that the medium in the long term is one that's democratic and it's civilized and suits the rest of the region and more importantly, is in tune with freedom and democracy uh, uh, and, and, and Western interests in the region. And if Mubarak were to step down, let's say if he were to step down today, do you have any idea who would take his place? I mean, I, th I think the beauty of the situation is that we don't know. The uncertainty here is the joy, and that's the way democracy works. I think it'd be but disastrous. But that's not the way a government's going to work. That is not the way an interim gov government's going to work. But if, it's, um, if it's an interim government you're talking about, or a transition government, in that case, whether it's Omar Suleiman or at a push, if it's Mohammed al baradei or if there's another candidate that people can agree on, some senior judge, I mean, it's up to the Egyptian people. And I think the last thing we ought to be doing either here in Washington or European capitals is to be sending out messages of who we do and do not want in public. That's where private diplomacy is important. That's where Obama and others are right to engage with the Egyptians in, 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 in private uh, in terms of you know, who goes forward and how it happens. And that's why the State Department and others have a role here. But in public, we ought to be very clear in the West that you know, Obama's, uh, sorry, sorry, uh, uh, Mubarak's time is up and he ought to go. Hmm. Okay, Ed, well, you know, you did hear Senator McCain say that Mubarak will eventually or should eventually uh, step down sooner rather than later. Ed Hussein, thank you very much. Uh, I appreciate you joining me again. That was, he is from the Council on Foreign Relations.